Hey y'all, hey, welcome to TKTV. I am your host, Tracy Knight, I with TK and TKTV. Um, if this is your first time here, welcome. Come on in, sit down, have a relax, grab some popcorn, something to drinky drink. I got my water. Um, and just soak in the essence that is TKTV. Um, and you're coming a good night. Tonight is Ozempic Update Night. Now, I was doing a couple of other things. I'm multitasking, y'all. I'm multitasking. But it is time for an update. And I got some exciting things I want to share with you guys. Yes, I am in my room. I'm at my little vanity. Y'all don't need to see what I see in front of me. But just know, there's been some work going on. Okay? And if you notice, I've done something, a little something with my hair. I'm working on that. I'm working on it. Okay? I'm not a stylist. Okay? I just, you know, and if this don't work, trust me, there's a plan B. But it is time for the Ozempic update. So let me tell y'all what's been going on. Um, if you're new to Ozempic or you haven't tried it yet, you're considering it. First of all, make sure you talk to your doctor because I'm not a doctor, nor do I play one on YouTube. Okay. Um, I'm just sharing my experiences while I'm on this Ozempic journey. Okay. And if any of it relates to you or you connect to it or anything else like that, Yay, then I've done my job because I'm sharing because I care. You know, sometimes sometimes you just got to hear somebody else say it before it clicks in your own mind. You're like, oh, I get it. I get it. That's how it happens for me. So welcome. And I'm hoping that something I say may help you open up a door, um, help you create a question to ask your doctor or ask yourself. Because sometimes we got to just keep it real with us, okay? Now, Ozempic. Just so we can go ahead and do the Ozempic for beginners. Let's put it like that. Um, Ozempic is a drug that is prescribed for uh, weight loss. It's a semi-glutide, okay? SLP1, I think is what they call it. Like I said, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know all the little medical terms, okay? Um, but I do know that it is primarily diagnosed for those who are type 2 diabetic and want to lower their A1C or their blood glucose levels, okay? And that's the reason I started because, you know, the numbers were... They were up there. I mean, they were doing some things, okay? And I got kids. I've got kids who's got kids, and I want to be around for everything. And so I did my little research, went to my doctor. We talked about a few things. We even talked about Munjara, which is another semaglutide that's prescribed for type 2 diabetics. Now, here's the issue. Here's the thing. Okay, so maybe this is a recap of the first time, or the should have been the first time. Here's the thing. Um, I didn't know anything about Ozempic. Okay. I had tried a little bit of Jardians in the past. I'd gone to see an endocrinologist. Um, I used the Freestyle Libra. Yeah, there it is. It's a little white disc under there. It helps monitor my blood sugar. Um, and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew that I was a type 2 diabetic. I've been on metformin forever. Okay. So I've taken some, some medications over the years to help keep my diabetes under control. Okay. And like I said, my kids are starting to have kids. And it just hit me one day that, you know what? These numbers, this, this A1C thing is way too high. Um, the glucose levels, which I knew could be a problem if they were high because my husband is a diabetic and he's on insulin. And when my doctor told me you are one step away from insulin, if you don't do something, oh no, we're going to take two steps back, doc, let's do something else. So he introduced me to Ozempic. And after a little bit of hula, hula hooping, jumping through red tape or whatever with the insurance companies, um, I finally started on Ozempic in January of 2023. At that time, I was at 242 pounds. Now, I may not look like I'm too... I might even look bigger than 242 pounds. I don't know. But um, I was trying to find out, you know, if it was going to help me lose weight, yay. But if it was going to take those numbers down, even better. Because that was my in entire goal in the beginning. So, in January of 2023, I was 242 pounds. So, as of today, because I'm weighing myself daily now because of a program on with the VA... I am 224.5. Now, if you've been here with me for a minute, you know that I still got a few pounds to go before I get back to where I was just about to hit the two teens. You know, 219, 218, 217. I had got down to 220, y'all. I was so excited about that. And it was, you know, it came to a complete stop. Let's put a pin in it and we'll come back. But like I said, if you're new to Ozempic and you're like, okay, what does it do? I don't know how to take it. First of all, of course, see your doctor, read the instructions. Um, but the most common side effects, which is what everybody's talking about when they're talking about Ozempic, okay? Um, 
Side effects are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, some people headaches, exhaustion. Those are the most common ones. And they can hit you like a pebble or a ton of bricks. This is an individual thing, okay? It's all about what you and your body is willing to tolerate, all right? Some people get nausea and vomiting and all that really, 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 really bad. Some don't. Some, God bless you all, don't have any side effects at all. How do y'all do? Anyway, yeah, and some of them have them to the extreme where they just have to take additional drugs for the nausea. And I'm like, oh my God. Now, see, I got two kids, two, uh, that I gave birth to. Okay, we have a blended family. We have three beautiful children. But I had two that I got birth to. Never had a day of morning sickness. Never. I think I now know, and no disrespect for the women who've gone through it, because I don't know, didn't do it. But I now think I know how it feels to have the morning sickness, the nausea, and the, and the need to, you know. Um, I even gave them names, nausea and divomity. You know, if you know, you know. Um, and since I'd never had morning sickness, this is what I, I think it's akin to. You know what I mean? Because when it does hit me, it hits me and it's in the morning. So after a couple of hours after getting up, you know, if I sit still enough, get my ginger tea. Y'all need to get some ginger tea. It's ginger tea relax or you know whatever then it eases out i gotta turn this mirror that's sitting next to me up because it's got the big face looking at me and that's a little bit distracting um so yeah it only it would last for me in the morning so i think i feel what you know expecting mothers might be feeling as far as morning sickness with those side effects um but then, like I said, some people don't have them at all. And some of the benefits of being on Ozempic is that you lose weight. Now, the cons of it all. Okay, now there are those who have had paralysis of the stomach, gastrointestinal issues. Um, I once had diverticulitis. Yeah, diverticulitis. But the doctor said it wasn't anything to do with the Ozempic. I don't know. I probably should have gotten a second opinion. In any case, um, serious intestinal issues being on Ozempic. Now, I think, and this is only based on some of the reports that I've read, some of the documents that I've seen and everything else like that, that it may be because a lot of people have been able to take the Ozempic and they're not diabetics. So it's doing what it's supposed to do to a diabetic's body, but it's not doing it to a diabetic's body. You know what I'm saying? And so now they're having issues. They're finding that the people who are having these issues the most are the ones who are taking it off brand. And there are some doctors who are still prescribing it off brand as a weight loss drug and not necessarily for those for those people who are uh, type 2 diabetics. Um, insurances are tightening down on it. You know, they're like, mm-mm. What you're not going to do is um, take this medicine and you're not a diabetic. So it's getting harder and harder to get, especially if you're not uh, a, a diabetic. Um, and it's for type 2, not even type 1. So they're prescribing stuff like Wagovi and Zepbound. Now, those are weight loss prescription drugs, okay? Um, Y'all hang on a little bit. Why is that play in my makeup? Um yeah, that that that's a, a weight loss drug. Let me scoot you over just a teeny bit because I got to get in this drawer. And uh, people are taking those for weight loss. But like I said, Ozempic and Munjaro, especially Ozempic, has been known to, you know, be prescribed for weight loss. And that could cause a problem because those of us who need it have had to go through the issues of, um, what's the word? What's the word, y'all? Um, being out of stock, back order, you know, things of that nature. And that could be a problem. I'm just putting this on because, see, I want to see how it's going to look in the morning when I get ready to go to work. Because if it ain't working, plan B. Anyway, so I have been doing this since the, the 23rd, I mean, 2023. And um, I've had some issues with the side, side effects. They've gotten better. And at its worst, I can honestly say that I think it's more because Tracy can be awfully awfully hard-headed when it comes to what you should and should not be eating which has probably got me to the point where i was a type 2 diabetic in the first place okay so um that might be an issue and so i'm like okay well when i know that i eat too much or i'm eating the wrong things i can definitely feel it because what ozipic does is it helps slow down that digestion issue so if you eat like this something that big um you're going to be full really fast and you're going to stay full for a long time. So I'm guessing 
makes sense that if you're not eating as often, you're not taking in as many calories and or unwanted, unneeded fats. And um, it's taking a long time to come out your stomach, which is what can cause the diarrhea. Because if it's, if you're getting the diarrhea, it's coming out your stomach and it's coming out your stomach. No questions asked, no permission needed. If you're going to be in the diarrhea issue, it's because it's sitting in your stomach and it's just sitting in your stomach. Okay. And it's waiting to get broken down at a slower rate than normal. Okay. So there's that. Um, I used to have some finishing spray, but I think my daughter once again has stolen from me, which goes to show you that Mary Kay is just not for the older people. The young people still as well. Okay. So um, I was saying with the, the side effects. Okay. So if you're new to that, yeah, if you're lucky, you don't get them good for you. Um, I'd like to know because when you start, you start at 0.25 milligrams. That's so your body can get acclimated to this drug because it ain't no joke. And it's going to go in there and ozemp. Okay. And your body's going to be like, what, what? And some people drop a lot of weight really quick. It is my theory. And I'm probably not the only one where it's like the more weight you have to lose, the faster and the most weight that falls off in the beginning. Okay. And then some of us will plateau, you know, where we're not losing as much as often as fast. Right. Okay. What in the world? Oh, I think I know what happened there. I think I got some glue there. Yeah. If you, if you know, lace wigs, you know. Um, okay. That, Cause this is a, quick zoom thingy so um where was i oh yeah just trying to the dosages then after a few weeks at 0.25 you're going to go up to 0.5 milligrams right and this is where it really starts to rev up what's going on um your appetites really should you know decrease a little more so you're really not hungry i've heard some people say they have to make themselves eat because they're they're just not hungry um and it stays there for a long time. So, and I can attest to that because there have been times, even at the 0.5 milligrams, where I might eat maybe some oatmeal and some toast in the morning, which is around like eight, nine o'clock, especially on telework days. And then I'm looking up, it's 2.30. I'm thinking, oh, well, maybe I'll just make a sandwich or, or I'll just get some grapes or some watermelon, some fruit. And then my biggest meal of any day is always, is always dinner, right? So... But even then, I'm eating smaller portions. So the, by the time I got to the one milligram, that is so crooked. Why are y'all? By the time I got to the one milligram, I was like, okay, well, I'll eat if I have to. Mm. I'm not eating. I once told my, my husband, if I was going to eat bad going to McDonald's, I had to get a kid's meal. Because I'm going to barely finish the cheeseburger and I'm not going to eat all the fries, okay? And I drink a lot of water. Now, I have a circle bottle. So this this pod that you see in here, today it is green apple. My favorite. Oh, my God. It's my favorite. Mm. It's the green apple. So when I want the flavor, I just turn the nozzle a little bit. And then I get that green apple flavor. So it gives me the, the thinking that I'm drinking something sweet, like a soda or juice. But I'm not. I'm, it's no calories, no sugar. It's just straight water, but it's got a green apple fla flavor. If you haven't tried it, y'all got to try it. I know you can get the pods and everything else at Walmart. You can go to circle.com and get it. Okay. So um, then you can go up to one. Some people are at two milligrams. I am at one milligram. I had to go back to five at one point because of the stock issue, but now that we're back in stock. Now that's where the excitement of this month goes in. I started this month at 230.5 pounds. I know. Oh no, I was not happy about it. My endocrinologist was like, well, don't worry about it because, you know, we're really concerned about your A1C, which she was right. But at that point, I was still on the point five and then it had kind of leveled out. The, the, those numbers weren't even going down anymore. And I was like, okay, so what do we do about that? If I'm not going to worry about the weight, okay, whatever. Um, Because I'm going to worry about the weight anyway. Um. Could you tell me what I'm going to do about this, this A1C thing? And she's like, well, we just got to make sure you're in your, your sugar intake, where you watch what you're eating and throw some exercise in there. So I did that. I get on the treadmill now, guys, three to f at least three days 
out of the week, okay? 10, some 10 minute workouts, 25 to 30 minute workouts, okay? But I am doing it. And it's becoming more of a habit, so it's not as bad. You know, I don't have to say, oh my God, I gotta get on the treadmill. No, I get on the treadmill and I have a good time with that. So, since we're just doing just a little list, looky see kind of thing, I'm just gonna use an old eyebrow pencil. And um, Ozempic has helped as the tool it's supposed to be, you know? Um, holding back that, that appetite and everything else like that. But I noticed that at point five, the food noise, and if you've been on Ozempic for a while, you know what I mean when I say food noise was really, really loud. But now that I'm back on the one milligram, I've noticed that the food noise, the whispering, the whispering, so much so that I can ignore the whispers. It was the yelling I couldn't take. And so even when I know that I think I want to eat something, I know that I'm not really hungry. So I've been able to cut back on the eating when I'm not really hungry, just eating because it's there kind of thing. Um, and just, you know, hanging out with some vegetables, healthy snacks, which is fruit. I ate a whole bag of Honeycrisp apples. Not at once, y'all. But that was my my go-to. Gotta have something sweet snack. So now I gotta go get some more. So I'll probably get some more on my way home from work tomorrow. Right? Um, And this is just an eyebrow pencil. that A classic eyebrow pencil that we have from Mary Kay. We have an eyebrow liner. Brow liner that I could use. But it's gonna be a little dark. And I'm just trying to get a, a, a feel of what my makeup's gonna look like in the morning. Okay? Okay? So, um... Yeah, so those are the dosages. If that, you know, I know I'm all over the place, y'all. I know, I know. Y'all gotta love me. And if you do, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe, because it is what it is. Um, and I'm and I'm actually just really playing in the makeup. So I was so excited because at 2:30 at the beginning of the month, I got on my scale today. I am at 224.5. So I have lost the whole six pounds throughout this whole month. And I know that's not a lot of weight, okay? A lot, a lot of weight. Some nutritionists say you should you lose one to two pounds a week with good diet and exercise. Well, I ain't lose two pounds a week, okay? I, I It didn't happen like that for me. Um... But six pounds at this point, I am so excited about that. And I'm thinking if I can at least lose another two, three more pounds before the end of this month, then I will be able to get to the two teens. The two teens, y'all. Get down to 219, 218, 270. I am so ready to get to the two teens. Y'all just don't know. Um, what I just used was the liquid, our liquid, um, make a liquid eyeshadow. I'm going to tell you what this color is because it's a really pretty color. It's a really go good go-to color too as well. This is um, pink starlight and I love a good pink. So when I'm doing a pink undertone with my colors and stuff too, this is my base. This is what I can use as a primer, a base on my eyeshadows. But we're not going through all that tonight because I just want to give myself an idea of what I'm going to look like in the morning when I do my makeup. Okay, there's that. I'm going to throw on some mascara. Um, so I was excited about that. And the, and the food, like I said, the food noise said a whisper. And I, you know what I had to eat, eat today, y'all? And I'm full. This morning, I got up and I made myself a cup of, um, what did I make this morning? Oh, iced coffee. I love my coffee. I ain't giving up my coffee. So they say you should probably draw back on caffeine. It's not like I drink pots and pots of coffee every day. I may have a cup and a half if I'm drinking hot coffee. And that half is just so it can warm up the little bit that's left in the coffee. So it's about a cup and a half. And then um, that's it for my caffeine. So today I made some coffee and I iced it up. It was really good. Might have been a little sweeter than normal. But um, that's what I had as far as my coffee. And then I had some um, oatmeal. The maple and brown sugar oatmeal with some wheat bread um, with toast. Toasted wheat bread with a little bit of butter. That's what I had for breakfast today, right? So I was like, a, and I ate it late. So it was like 10, 30, 11 ish, 11 ish when I had it. So I was like, okay, well, if I get hungry, I'll just grab my little sunflower seeds because I have some of those to snack on because I told you I ate the last of the Honeycrisp apples. Got to get some more, right? And I wasn't really planning on going anywhere. I'd taken some chicken out for dinner and since i need to get some cooking oil yeah i know i gotta go to the grocery store fight me on this okay i haven't been to the grocery store yet so um i was gonna eat my sunflower seeds to snack on i got a little sleepy got a little sleepy didn't eat 
Then my husband got up and I didn't know he was off today. So he went and he got his fave crabs. Well, he was going to get crabs, but we ended up getting crab legs. So what I did was we took the chicken and we threw a couple of pieces on the grill because it is Memorial Day. You know what I mean? Pieces on the grill. And then we um grilled. We, we did all that for two pieces of chicken. <laughs> so we ate the chicken and crab legs. No, no vegetables, no starch, just those, the proteins. That's all we had today for dinner. And you know what? I'm full. And that was a couple hours ago. And I'm not hungry. Um, and I said to myself, if it gets, if it doesn't get too late and I feel like I got to eat, I'll just make myself a protein shake. You know, 180 calories. So I'm doing good. I'm sticking under my 1300 calories per day. Right? Yeah. So far, so good, you guys. What do you think? Um, and I'm loving it. So basically, what I came to tell you guys today was that things are going well. I'm losing weight still, and the numbers. Right before I changed my sensor, because you know these are your last 14 days. I took my um, and I started the one milligrams. I took my glucose, you know, thing is my fat. Oh, I'm using the phone, so I can't use you guys. Um, it said 97. 97. First, I was like, oh my God, is that too is that too low? But it was still in the green. So the average of my glucose numbers over the last week or so has been anywhere as low as 97 and as high as maybe 142. Now I know it's within the range to be somewhere like 70 and you know, maybe 160. I gotta get those numbers right. But before I started back on the one milligram and I was at 0. 0.5, I was up at 178, 189, 212. And it didn't matter whether I was on the treadmill. It didn't seem to matter that I was only eating fruits and vegetables, getting some protein in. Because, I, I mean, if you don't do it, you're going to cheat. And if you cheat, you cheat bad. At least that's Tracy. I'm just saying. But I noticed that now that I'm back on the one milligram and I'm still doing my, my treadmill workout and I'm still watching what I eat, that the higher dose or being back on the higher dosage really, really helps my sugar levels, okay? And I just recently had a blood work done to give myself the real, the current A1C based on them when they drew my blood. And so all that, all that is on there. And it had the A1C and it was like, okay, your A1C is, and I was like, oh, okay, well, yay, 8.5. I was like, no, but I started at nine and I knew it was going up. I knew it was going up when I had to be reduced to the 0. 0.5. So I was a little upset, but then I said, okay, this is my, my goal. So now I've been checking my A1C with the app that I use in between the times I go for blood and I'm down like 8.2, 8.3. And I'm like... So I was excited about that. Um, let me do this. Because I, I, you know, I, sometimes when I get started on the makeup, I keep going. So I was excited about that because that means that my initial goal, my initial goal of lowering my A1C is, is doing what it's supposed to do. Oh, that's too dark. Um... My glucose levels are doing what it's supposed to do. So that means the Ozempic is doing what it's supposed to do. I don't know. I might take that one. Um, this is one of my go-to colors. Yeah, right here, right here. Midnight Red, I think it is. And uh, I'm happy about that. I'm really happy about that. Now, do I wear blush in the mornings? No. Not every morning. Sometimes. Because usually... My makeup takes about 12 minutes, 15 if I can't decide what I'm doing. And I got to do the consular, y'all, because me in the dark circles, which used to be worse before I started using my eye cream. But um, sometimes there are days when all I do is put on some concealer on the hot spots, which is the um, dark circles and somewhere around my eyes. And I'm out the door. If I'm running late, that's all you're going to get. And my eyeliner, because without my eyeliner, my eyes just look like I'm sick. So... There you go. And so I'm going to shush this up a little bit. 
and I think I'm gonna be okay. Last night I took my shot. I do, I take my shots on Sundays. Um, and I've been doing it in my thighs. Now I know that there are some people who do it. Let me see if I can take this off and see how this is gonna look in the morning. Is it raining where you guys are? Cause I hear thunder and lightning over here where I'm at. Okay, I think that's gonna be okay. I think I did okay. Um, so I do my shots in my thighs. I alternate thighs, of course, um, and it's got to be the fatty tissue of your skin. And they say you can do it on the back of your arm and everything else like that. Um, I haven't tried it on the back of my arms. I've done it on my thighs and I've done it on my stomach. I do northwest, north, south, east, and west, you know, kind of thing. So I can alternate where I put those shots. But I've been using them in my thighs because to me, for me, it seems to kind of um, break down that whole, what's the word? What's the word, y'all? Illness, because some people say if you do that, it might, you know, it helps keep down the um, nausea if you do it in a certain spot. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I ain't know that, but now I do. Okay, guys, that's it. That's my that's my Ozipic update and my little let's play and makeup and see how this is gonna look in the morning. So I think <laughs> think we may have a winner, 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 chicken dinner. So again, if you've been here this long, if you sat here this long with me and you've been here with me this long, I love you. I appreciate you. Drop it in the comments if you have had an opportunity to increase your dosage and what it has done for you. It, has it made you? Has it? Has it brought on? you know, side effects you didn't have before? Has it um, lessened the effect of the side effects that you had before? Are you still at that blessed area where you don't have side effects at all? And again, if this is something that you're concerned about or that some of your side effects are just way too much for you, um, I'm glad that you're here, but please see your doctor. Let him know what your concerns are because I'm finding out that there are a lot of people who are concerned that after being on Ozempic for a while that it just stops working or they're not quite sure what brought on the plateau because I have found out that even with Ozempic, even before Ozempic, when you're really steadily doing the, the diet and exercise and whatever, you do reach a plateau. You reach a plateau and then you're gonna have to pump it up, whether it's increasing or chasing, changing your meds, um, changing what you eat, adding a little bit, taking something away, adding more exercise or doing different exercises to help burn that extra fat so you can lose weight. Um, so this may be the same thing with um, the Ozempic. If you find yourself plateauing and you're seeing your numbers really not going anywhere, they're not really going up, but they're not really going down either, then talk to your doctor because you may have reached the plateau and maybe, just maybe, like I said, I'm not a doctor. You know, the Ozempic may be something that mm, is just not strong enough to meet your needs. Or you may have to tweak it a little bit. Tweak it a little bit. Talk to your doctor, please. Because the goal for all of us at the end of the day is to not be labeled as a type 2 diabetic. Be Tracy, who has type 2 diabetes. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm living with it. I'm not letting it live through me. I'm living with it. Um, and doing it in a way that keeps me healthier, happier. Um, and it helps me meet my goals. Okay. So in the meantime, in between time, um, and if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. And, um, I'm going to see you next time right here on TKTV. I love you all. Bye.